Hello, welcome back to the podcast. I hope you've had a great summer. We are now back and this is the first episode in the brand new season. Season six of the Master Your Lens podcast begins now. You're listening to the Master Your Lens Podcast, episode 127. Hey, John Lee Dumas here, the founder and host of EO Fire, and welcome to the Master Your Lens Podcast, the photography podcast dedicated to sharing inspiring stories, technical tips, and powerful secrets to help you become a better photographer. And now, your host, Matthew Jordan Smith. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you had time to get away and recharge this summer. I'm just back from vacation and I am ready to go now. We all need a break. And this podcast was down for one month to get away, recharge and come back fresh. And that's exactly how I feel. Fresh, alive, energized and ready to go to work. I was in Austria a place where I thought I'd never really go. We went to Vienna and then to Salzburg and we had an amazing time. Now, how we ended up going to Austria is really a funny story. You see, my wife and I were planning to go to Spain for vacation and had been planning for months. But then in one day, things changed. A friend of mine posted a picture from his backyard. You see, he lives in Austria. And I saw the pictures and I'm like, wow, his pictures are always amazing. I've known this friend for about three or four years now. And I've seen his pictures throughout the year in his neighborhood. And they are absolutely amazing. Well, as we're planning for vacation, I saw one of his posts and I said, wow, maybe we should go to Austria instead of Spain. I talked it over with my wife showed her pictures, and in a moment, she agreed. So it was set. We were going to Austria. Now, the funny thing is, I've had a connection to Austria all my life. As a child, I watched the movie, The Sound of Music with my mother. Have you ever seen that movie? Well, if you haven't, you absolutely need to see this movie. It's amazing. You can get it on iTunes or probably everywhere else where you can download any movie. It's worth your time. I watched this movie with my mother as a child. Watching the movie with my mother is one of my memories from childhood. By the way, it was my mother's birthday this week. And what did I give her? The Sound of Music. Now, I'm not sure if the entire family was there together, but in my mind, I just remember watching the movie with my mother. And it had a strong impact on my life. I come from a very musical family. Growing up, everybody played an instrument and everybody could sing. My parents, my sisters, they all sing very well. So watching The Sound of Music was perfect for all of us. The movie takes place in Salzburg, Austria. Growing up, I never knew I'd go there or that photography would lead me there. Now, I never had plans to go there. But now, one of my friends is from Austria, not far from Salzburg. So we go to Austria, to Vienna. My wife's early background is in classical music. So going there was great for both of us. Mozart, Beethoven. If you love classical music, Vienna is the place you want to go. We started there, then went to Salzburg. And when I got there, I went right back to childhood because Salzburg looks exactly the same as it did in this movie that was done over 50 years ago. I have a private course where I teach photography lighting. I started the course 
about three or four years ago, which is how I met my friend from Austria, actually. My online course is two components. There's an online training, and then there's weekly live trainings. In the very beginning of the live training sessions, one of my first sessions was doing a segment on watching the sound of music. You see, early on in the movie, after the intro, they go into what seems like still shots to introduce Salzburg. Now, yes, this is a movie, but they hold on locations like it's a still photograph. And these images are stunning. I love the way this movie's done, the way it's shot, the lighting. So I use that first segment of the movie as a lesson in my live training course. And it's been a while since I've done that now. So I think I'll probably revisit that lesson again in the next live training session I give to my class. Well, to go there and see these locations and they look exactly the same, it really blew me away. Life is funny. Today, September 4th, 2019, I am coming to you from Arizona. I am here in Phoenix doing the Portrait Masters Conference. If you are here, please let me know. I speak on Friday morning. Yes, I am a little jet lagged, but I'll be fine by Friday. I flew from Austria back to Tokyo, spent about a week there, then flew here the other day, and now I'm ready to go and deliver my segment on Friday. I'll be teaching lighting for 90 minutes on Friday morning at 9 a.m. So if you're here in Arizona, make sure you are there on time. I've got a lot to share. There are a lot of great speakers here. And if you are here, definitely go and see everybody. I'll share more about this conference after it's all done, where I can share everything in detail. Today, we're talking about the state of emergency in photography. There's a lot going on in the world. Wherever you are listening from, maybe you're here in America. There's a lot going on here. Maybe you're in Europe. Maybe you're in Asia. Wherever you are, there's a lot going on around you. In some places, it feels like we're in a state of emergency. As a photographer, your work should reflect what's happening in your life, what's happening around you. 10 years from now, when people look back at your pictures, will they just see a pretty picture or will they feel something? Think about the pictures that have made an impact on you. Were they just beautiful pictures or did they make you feel something? or connect with something. For those of you who are old enough, back in the 60s, a photographer named Eddie Adams took one photograph in Vietnam, and that picture connected with the world. One picture. If you don't know the picture, look up Eddie Adams and Vietnam. It will pop right up. It's a very famous image, but he was a photojournalist. One of my favorite photographers is a fashion photographer named Stephen Meisel. M-E-I-S-E-L, Stephen Meisel. After September 11th, 2001, Stephen Meisel shot a fashion story. The story was shot for Italian Vogue. Now let's think about that for a second. A fashion magazine is always showing beautiful, pretty pictures, right? The idea is to sell clothes. A lot of fashion photography is all about fantasy, making people feel beautiful so that they will go out and spend money on clothing. That's the general idea. But this one photographer, Stephen Meisel, wanted to do something different. And after 9-11, he shot a story 
for Italian Vogue magazine called State of Emergency. These images are so powerful, I've never forgot them. And today, I hope you won't either. Maybe you're in your car driving. Maybe you're at the gym working out or just going for a walk. The first moment you are free, I'd love you to do a search on Google and put in Stephen Mizell, State of Emergency, and just go to images and look at those pictures. After 9-11, September 11th, 2001, the entire world changed. Travel, especially in America, changed in a major way. We lost a lot of our freedom and everyone traveling was scrutinized and people were reacting to that left and right. Stephen Mizell, even though he was shooting a fashion story, selling expensive garments, decided to put what was happening all around him into this fashion story. I've seen thousands of fashion stories over the decades. None of them have stuck with me the way state of emergency has. I want you to see these pictures because they illustrate the power of photography and your voice as a photographer. There's a lot going on in the world right now. And no matter what you shoot, portraits, weddings, fashion, landscape, what makes your pictures different is you putting your life into your pictures. You putting what's happening in your life, around you, in your pictures. That's what makes them different. It makes them stand out. And that makes you stand out as a photographer. If you do nothing else today, after listening to this podcast, I'd love for you to search for State of Emergency by Stephen Mizell. And then look at at these powerful pictures. As you look at these pictures, think about what you are feeling. They're emotional images. You cannot look at these pictures and not feel something. Now, it's not easy taking a stand with your pictures, but if you do, people will notice and your work will stand out. What's happening in your world? What's happened in the last month? What's happened in the last six months? And how do you feel about it? You have a choice. You can take beautiful, pretty pictures. There's nothing wrong with that. Or you can take pictures that make people stop for an instant and feel something. I've never met Stephen Mizell. But those pictures in state of emergency are images that I will never forget. And they make an impact. And your images, too, can make an impact when you start sharing how you feel about everything that's happening in your world. I'm based in Japan, but people stop me all the time and ask how I feel about all the gun violence taking place in America right now. No matter where you stand on that issue, whether you think this is a state of emergency or not, you can make a statement with your photographs saying how you feel about what's happening right now at this time. That's the power we all have as photographers. Don't hold back. Share your opinion, visually, whatever it is. If you want people to notice you, notice your photography, make a statement. Now I know many of us are caught up in trying to make a living as a photographer. So we're only thinking about making a pretty picture to appeal to people. I understand that. But then what are you shooting for yourself? Use your personal work. To say how you feel, you'll be surprised what happens. How do you promote your photography? I am a big believer in having photo exhibits. An exhibit 
in your town, in your city, of the images that mean something to you will definitely have a reaction. People will remember you. And not just today or in that moment, but forever. The Stephen Mizell images, State of Emergency, was done back in 2012, shortly after 9-11. But I can sit here without seeing the images and remember every single one. They were that powerful. And we all have that ability to stand out. If there is something that you're upset about that's happening in your world, show it in your work. If there's something you're happy about that's happening in your life, show it in your work. One picture speaks a thousand words. And I already know you have a lot to say. Today's podcast is really all about impact. The impact an image can have on us, whether it's a still image or even a moving image. We spoke a lot about Stephen Mizell's work in the state of emergency. We also mentioned Eddie Adams and his powerful image from the 1960s. Moving images also have a powerful impact on us. While I was in Salzburg, Austria, I went to the location where they filmed the scene in the movie, The Sound of Music, where they're on the hilltop and where the main actress is teaching the children how to sing. It's a big scene in the movie. Joe, a deer, a female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun. Yes, that song. And it has affected people all over the world. The location's pretty hard to get to. And no tour groups go there. But my friend who lives in the area took us there. And there was no one else there. Pretty amazing. Now, three families did show up later on. Well, actually, two families showed up and stayed for about 15 minutes. Took their pictures and left. We were having a picnic on that same spot because in the movie, they're having a picnic. It was magical. Then all of a sudden, a car drove up, a taxi with one person inside. It's a man and he leaps out of the taxi. He is so excited to be there. His energy, his expression, it was like watching a child at Christmas. He almost runs over and asks my wife if she could shoot a video of him. She tells him that I be much better and points to me. And he asks me if I take a video of him with his smartphone. And then once I agree, he begins to sing the Do Re Mi song. He is so excited to be there in that spot. And he wants pictures on his smartphone and video of him singing. Now, the funny thing is, he didn't look the part. He looked very conservative. And after talking to him more, I found out he was an investment banker from New York City, but loved that movie. I'm going to admit, I was trying to be cool, but I felt like he was acting. Now, I want you to stop for one second and think about this. This is one movie made over 50 years ago and still having an impact on people. Even people who are kids today are affected by this movie. It's a great movie to teach children how to sing. Yes, this is a movie, but your pictures they also have the ability to move people in that same way and not just move them today, but forever. But you've got to put your emotion into each and every picture you make. This is why when you shoot things that you care about, the pictures come out being stronger. So make great pictures. Learn the art of photography. 
learn about lighting. By the way, the lighting in that movie is phenomenal. But also, put your heart and soul and your emotions, good, bad, or whatever, put them in your photographs and watch what happens. All right, Photography Nation, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Master Your Lens podcast. Make sure to tune back in next week for another episode of the Master Your Lens podcast. I'm Matthew Jordan Smith. Follow me on Instagram. You'll find me simply under Matthew Jordan Smith. It's the best way to keep up with everything that's going on in my world of photography. I wish you all the best. Always dream big. Bye for now.